it's already yeah I was about to say it's definitely done um so hello all and welcome to this week's talk on the NEBRC recruitment side of it uh so we have a guest speaker Steve from the NEBRC currently based out in Sheffield uh we had Martin two weeks ago to talk what the NEBC NEBRC is about um and this one's going to be going into more of the specifics if you do want to end up joining us uh so at the moment we have a few little technical difficulties that we are trying to sort but we will be starting the uh talk in a couple of minutes time so i'm just going to mute my mic and we'll get back to you Yeah, we're having a couple of technical issues. Um, it's going to take us a few minutes to uh, get going, but just hold on tight and we'll be uh, with you shortly.
All right, looks like uh, we've got all the issues sorted now, so uh, I'll uh, hand over to Steve to uh, talk about the NEBRC uh, recruitment. Hi everybody, uh, sorry about the delay. Uh, that's what happens when you update your operating system before you uh, uh, have a trial run with Teams, which is uh, what we use for the last uh, 18 months or so. So uh, I'm just here to talk about the Northeast Business Resilience Centre and how um, some of you could be part of it. I'll just give another apology beforehand. I'm about to have a delivery of something, so I might have to break away for uh, 30 seconds or so, but uh, there'll be some slides that I'll leave up in the meantime. So. Just a, a quick tour through what we're about. Um, our vision here is to uh, increase the regional resilience uh, for small and medium enterprises and business and, and the general community, but this is aimed at a business uh, forum um, through giving them advice, membership and cost effective services. A little bit about us. Um, when we say the Northeast Business Resilience Centre, the Northeast for us is that bit in greed on the map. So this is born out of some police boundaries. So that bit in green covers seven police forces from South Yorkshire through West Yorkshire, North Yorkshire, Humberside, Cleveland, Durham and Northumbria. Um, and those geographical boundaries there are police regions, which is um, where the centres are structured around. So we are uh, a seven force police region. I'm a detective inspector with South Yorkshire Police but work across uh, all seven forces um, and um, within that area we've got two regional organised crime units or ROCUs which is one in Yorkshire and the Humber and the other up um, near Sunderland which is called NERSU. So they're regional policing supporting the seven local police uh, forces. We work with two universities, uh, obviously yourselves and um, Sheffield Hallam. And um, what we did in terms of sort of the start of this journey is just look at, um, I suppose, universities with an appetite that could um, support sort of the vision and the model uh, with sort of the enthusiasm that's needed with it, but also the courses that are taught. We were keen in looking at the ethical hacking side of um sort of computer security uh, our, our entire model is based upon the scottish business resilience center who teamed up with abate university so um while we brought this down into the northeast what you've now got is um other centers similar to us but not as advanced as us popping up and down the country these are all funded by um a mix of private and public sector funding so from a business point, I'm seconded into this full time as a, a police officer, uh, as are my colleagues, but we're actually set up as a not for profit organisation. If you look in companies house, you'll see as there as any other business. Um, and that's because we are not operating as the police would do here. This is purely a protect message, but a proactive protect message, if you like. So crime reduction, but proactively far beyond what the police is. One can do in terms of capability, but also capacity. So as an organisation, we have a board um, and we have an advisory group. Um, lecturers like um, Bijou and uh, Shazrad from Sheffield Hallam, uh, key players on the advisory group, because they give that strategic direction to what the centre should be looking at, just in terms of what's the new threats, how do we communicate to businesses, how do we get out there. Trusted partners, which you can see on the slide, uh, is uh, all those organisations that are I, ASME approved to give out Cyber Essentials and Cyber Essentials Plus. Uh, and I'll, I'll touch on those um, a little bit later. So this is the team. Uh, you'll know Martin uh, as uh, he's been introduced already and I know he sort of comes and gives some of the presentations. Um, Becky Chapman, she's the director as a superintendent. Uh, you've got myself and I sort of now tend to look after the head of um, or well, the title is Head of Business Development, just looking at how we grow the business. Martin, he's doing an MSc in cybersecurity anyway, uh, and he's sort of the more technical out of the two of us. So he will generally run that side of the student side to it, but you'll find we cross over a lot. Uh, fourth member is Lizzie. Um, she'd be on the call normally, but she's just uh, engaged with some of the matters this afternoon, but she's in his client relations manager. 
So you predominantly find yourself dealing with self, Martin or Lizzie. Um, this is where the other centres are, uh, and it's just important to sort of touch on this at the minute. We were the first centre to go regional in England and Wales, and this is generally with the success of uh, your colleagues and peers and the students, as well as sort of how the business has been approached. It's had that much popularity, the concept of how these centres will start to deliver, protect an ongoing membership to the business community. The Home Office and the government have stepped up and have wanted to increase the number of centres. So consequently, all those police regions that I showed you on the previous slide have now got other centres coming up. So East Mids, West Mids, South West, South East, and now Wales are coming online. Manchester's something slightly different, but that's looking at becoming a, a resilient centre as well. You'll see there's a subtle change of, of name for some of the other ones. We're referred to as a business resilience centre. The others are referred to as a cyber resilience centre. The only real difference there is we may expand into other areas. Um, so not just purely remain as cyber going forward. We might um, cover some more of the aspects around fraud or retail crime as a real sort of community hub. Uh, uh, this is a bit of a business plan as it develops. The core of it is going to be cyber resilience, which is no different to the other centres. Just a bit of a concept, really. Um, this is just really sort of meant to represent single strands here coming together to create something that is far stronger than those individual pieces to it. So there's lots of different organisations and groups out there who've got some real excellent and visionary um, work going on in cybersecurity. But what they might have as a strength in some areas is lacking in the other ones. And, and clearly from a policing aspect, we can talk about that. Um, you know, police, we've got the good brand, we've got the good reputation, we've got the links through the National Crime Security Centre, NCA, into the Home Office. Yes, we can investigate. We haven't got that technical ability. We haven't got that innovative thought process in terms of actually getting hands off, hands on with things. We can be strategy setters and we can understand what the concept and the, the public is about. We cannot get into that real detail, which yourselves can. Just give me one second. I'll be the parcel. I, uh, I'm back. One of the parcels. Um, so the idea with this is to create a real sort of strong thread of different organisations that will make it a lot um, more successful, no matter which angle that we're coming at. Structure wise, this is sort of how we operate. So CEO um, at the minute, so we've got a director. We operate as a business board, but feed into that as the advisory panels and the trusted partner. Uh, got marketing comms, we've got a senior ethical, ethical hacker program, and then we've got cyber security consultant stroke students, which is what this sort of pitch is about, really. These are um, the organisations that we're affiliated to. So forget what they're representing, whether it's board, advisor group or trusted partner. These are the companies that are investing time and effort and finances into the Resilience Centre. So there'll be some names on there that you'd recognise anyway, but uh, you know, from the backgrounds that you've got, there's some real big players that hopefully you can see on there, which are you know, certainly operating in the fields that you guys are. And um, what I would say with this is there's opportunities here where some of these, particularly the trusted partners, but not forgetting the board and advisory group, will see some of the services and the products. So they're partly invested into this to see that talent that's coming through, uh, which is you guys. Just a bit of background about sort of when we're talking about businesses, um, because when you get into a commercial position, people can sometimes think there could be a little conflict or overlap. This is how many businesses we're talking that exist in the North East. And uh, the vast majority of these aren't really aware of uh, the impact of uh, cyber and um, 
anything that is really uh, out there that can help them be a little bit more secure in the in their field. From a policing aspect, we are shifting the focus away from a pursue, so an investigation, where we're wanting to sort of firm up and protect the network. You know, the vast majority of attacks that are out there for businesses uh, and individuals can be prevented, or those opportunities you know, in today's technology can be blocked. Now, I'm not saying that doesn't mean there's a workaround coming in the future, but this in some respects is, is simple crime prevention advice. You know, in this world, the best form of defence is defence. Uh, and there's a whole uh, group of organisations out there that we need to reach. The challenge is some of those don't realise that we need to reach them. In terms of what we offer from our current student services, uh, and this is where we are looking at sort of going forward and constantly developing, is I suppose um, the opportunity here to, to deliver and work on uh, pieces of work or businesses around these areas. So um, we look at internet investigations for businesses uh, and this is either on an individual aspect or on a corporate aspect. So what is out there um, that's available to be found by somebody who knows what they're looking at? So this isn't um, done in a sort of policing aspect. This is open source work, but we're going to find out what can be found out about you. And there's all sorts of commercial sensitivities out, out there that people just aren't aware of. Vulnerability assessments, you know, that, that's bread and butter in some respects, but we're looking at, you know, let's get businesses systems tested, web apps, um, internal remote testing. Let's see um, what protections are there or what vulnerabilities we might be able to expose. Big thing, and this is a really difficult one when you're trying to engage with people who don't uh, quite understand what they need to do, but it's that um, awareness training and this really starts really down at the simple and basic levels. How do we get people switched on to understanding that there's a requirement really for everybody to have some form of security uh, protection and uh, advice around this? The recent work we've done, um, we were presenting on a webinar and we asked 70 uh, odd businesses who were all linked to the banking sector with turnovers in exceeding a million pounds. Who's heard of action fraud? And three quarters of the group hadn't. And for those who are sort of wondering what's the relevance of that is, action fraud from a business sense is a 24 seven uh, service that will help anybody who's suffering a cyber attack. So, um, it will put you in touch with the right people and it will have a right response and it also allows the uh, law enforcement team to look at uh, either a local mitigation or a, a regional or a national response depending what that is and we've got three quarters of companies that haven't heard of that because the, what they don't do is realize that there's a policing aspect to it now if they don't understand who to call if they're having an issue such as a, a live cyber attack we know from the work that's also been done that they don't really know that there's NCSE advice and guidance out there. They don't know about the small business guide. They don't know about how to set the passwords. So there's some real simple stuff that needs to go out there. But very quickly, this could also be aimed at the IT security. You might have people saying, you know, are these guys as good as they say they are? Can you test it out? Or can you deliver some training? Or can you assess the policy? So it's a real sort of end of either part of the scale here that we look at. Other work as well is looking around um, just, you know, the whole continuity and resilience testing and exercises with it. So what we're looking at being able to do here is, is train students to be able to deliver this on behalf of, of the centres. And um, Matt and Ryan are part of this team. Um, being perfectly honest, as we've set this up, we've ended up with a different model to what we would have done if it hadn't been for COVID. You know, Matt and Ryan were part of the first set of guys that came along uh, and were part of the team and have almost sort of been that pilot with it. As we were about to go live with the events, which was at the start of this year, the, the COVID um, pandemic sort of kicked in. So we've had to align ourselves slightly differently. But nevertheless, this is the work that we will be doing because whether we're 
we're in this working environment long term or short whatever covid has done is accelerated the working practices of businesses to taking themselves out of commercial places and work from home so actually covid's increased the necessity for work like this but at a time when that reach is a little bit challenging um, here's some very sort of quick testimonials about um, what the current students have said so this is a mix of what's come from uh, your colleagues at Northumbria and uh, your colleagues down at uh, Sheffield you know th this um, is paid work but you won't uh, probably notice much of a difference from undertaking this work from a monetary aspect what this is is about networking exposure training practical application and being part of a whole network that is sort of at the forefront of where the protect messages should be and from a, a position in terms of funding we're still getting home office funding this year and we're looking at trying to get some next year and the reason i mentioned that is this is sort of seen as pivotable to be able to sort of start to really reach out and get into businesses so in terms of the experience it'll give you um this is a, in addition to your to your studies and to your training uh, yes there's a day rate so this is about being employed as a, under a zero hours contract and then as particular pieces of work come in we'd, we'd look at sort of being able to develop um those and use you on those but put that to one side this is something that can potentially give you the edge over your colleagues because this will hone your skills into a commercial aspect to it so some of this is about making you a little bit marketable some about this might be about some presentations some about this being able to deliver some training input to different levels you know some audiences can be quite challenging because they might see you as a bit of a threat they might want to test your credibility against their uh, industry experience but some of this could be a real sort of lower hanging fruit so how do we get businesses to switch on to the fact that they need some simple advice and, and, and experience with it so we give you the training we give you um, access to the uh, member side of the centre uh, it's a bit of a modular approach um, but what we're after here is just a bit of commitment and a bit of effort and some innovation from yourselves because if this is the field that you want to get into this can look really good on your CV in terms of that networking capability um, a couple more slides and then that's it I'll try and see uh, how I can take questions in this format but um, as a not-for-profit company we've been able to go and bid against other organizations and we've won um, a recent procurement process which is going to um, bring in some additional income into the centre but we've been appointed by Leeds City Region to deliver their cyber security programme and they, what they're wanting to do is look at how do we support self-employed and micro businesses um, we've pitched what the centre can do and this is with the students the businesses and law enforcement aspect to it and we really sort of did well in this world in terms of how procurement works um, and we've been awarded the contract so the challenge facing us today at this moment in time is we need to go out and get a couple hundred companies signed up from the Leeds city region which bizarrely covers york and uh, harrogate which sits in north yorkshire but we've been asked to go and push out um, and get a message and get a membership and sign up from it the reason i'm putting this slide up is one it shows you where the centers are positioned in terms of what we can do but also this is where additional work's going to come in so what we're after from yourselves is um a number of students and um when we did this last time we wanted 10 students from each university and we got nine so we weren't far off but there's there's no sort of fixed number in mind but we, we we could be sort of 10 students 12 students per university um we're looking at people who can uh, be part of this journey and stay with us uh, and whether you think you're all first years but whether you're first or second years this is a rolling program where we'd want you to be part of the work that the center can do now this isn't just about training people up and then leaving them 
we're giving students pieces of work anyway. So some of um, colleagues who are part of the student services are, de are developing products for our website, which could just be simple infographics, could be little webinars, could be little demos. But the concept here is we want to create work that's relevant for our members anyway. So if this has been of interest to you, if it's something you want to um, contact us about or you want to apply for, um, then get in touch. In terms of the application process, we want in a, a CV and a covering letter sent to uh, inquiries at nebrcentre.co.uk. Um, it's a CV that you'd expect, just make it relevant to what sort of being discussed today. And by relevant, yes, it's about your technical knowledge and skills, but we wanted to get you out into the workplace. So, you know, show us a bit of your personality or show us some of your other qualities. Um, and they are also factoring in part of how we do um, the assessment. What we've done last time, which we'll do again this time, is based around um, your CVs and, and the letter and um, some technical work that we sort of do with the universities. Um, we sort of come down to a pool of individuals that we then um, bring together for a, um, an interview process. And this is really just a, I suppose, just see where you're at with things and um, see how you can sort of find and, and explore um, your way around maybe a simple scenario and just how you come across and deliver. So, um, what we wanted to do is, is get this process sort of up and running from today, really. So by the end of November, anybody who's interested, um, if you can let me have a CV and a covering letter at this address, then um, we can be in touch and start to, start to assess the suitability of it. Um, Martin Wilson does a fair bit of work with the clinic, um, so he dips in and out from time to time. But you can either contact myself, Martin or Lizzie. We're always here. You've also got your colleagues like uh, Matt and Ryan. They're part of the team and, and are remaining so. So they'll be able to give you a bit of a steer as well. So that's a quick whistle stop tour through from me. I'm happy to take some questions if I can work out how I can actually see them. But uh, I'll end back to Ryan and Matt. We haven't actually had any questions at the moment. I'll give it a couple of minutes to see if anyone's uh, got some. But... Uh, probably one that a few people are thinking about when you said the assessment and working your way through a scenario, because we got this question last time, is you don't need to know absolutely everything about it. Uh, is that right? Or it, it's not a highly technical, we're going to give you a, a virtual machine, you need to hack into it in X amount of time. No, you're absolutely right there, Matt. Um, I, I don't mind I don't mind sharing the uh, what we did last time, to be fair, because I'm, I'm sure it'll come out. What the what the test was is just how you would explain um, and what you would explain to a business that was looking at um, wanting some cyber security advice. So the scenario was based around somebody knows that they need to get a little bit more cyber savvy in cyber security. They don't know what the need for their business. You know, what would you suggest? Uh, and to be fair, it's a really good point that Matt's made. This is, you know, about other skills as well as the technical skills you know the, the fact that you're on this course the fact that you, you're selected for it the fact that you sort of sat here you, your technical skills are going to outstretch mine um, where we're at anyway and if, you, if you're outstretching mine in terms of what's available out there for the vast majority of the public you know you'll be able to run rings down around them but the challenge isn't what that technical part is here the challenge here is is how do we get businesses engaged into it in a in a way that they understand it, that they they don't fear it, they want to embrace it, and they want to make it part of everyday life. You know, if there's a fear of, um, you know, standing the ground and absorbing something, or running away from it, we want the absorption of it. So yes, what we do is assess where you are from a technical ability. But Matt's absolutely right. We're not going to go and give you a. Um, a live hack demo and expect you to run through it because I'd expect you to know that or you'd be expected to be able to talk through that. Well, we do that with some of the work from the university as part of the scoring assessment with it. This is just understanding really, you know, are, are you in a position where um, 
you can either make that uh, understandable to an audience, but bear in mind that audience could be somebody at the very beginning of that cyber journey, or it could be somebody um, who is quite technical. So you you might be in a position where you've got a managing director saying, I'm, I'm a little bit uncomfortable from the support I get from my IT team, or my IT team are saying we need to spend X, Y, and Z and have all this. You know, I want you to give me an assessment of it. So on one hand, you might be in a position where you're agreeing with the IT team say, but on the other hand, you might be in a position where you're sort of challenging their part and explaining something different to the MD. I'll just pause there for a second and then come back. I can pass it. Yeah. Doesn't look like we have overly many questions. Uh, I think someone's about to ask one in Discord. Um. Either a little type in line. Yeah. Right, I'm back again. All right. Someone's typing a question. Um, well, well. That was my delivery, by the way. So I'm right, good. Good. I'm settled now. So uh, someone's asking about the amount of commitments that they need to uh, put in. Um, so how many hours are they going to be mandatory to work? Stuff like that. I think that's the, what the question's asking. Okay. So. In terms of mandatory hours to work, um, there isn't any. Um, what we want you to be able to do is there's some mandatory training that we do. Um, and this is a bit of an evolving process, but there we will put on um, set um, online training packages, which might be a, a couple of hours. Now, the way we do that is we, we fit those in around what the commitments are from the universities. So we pull from two universities and we try and mix the students up, to be fair. This isn't a competition between the two universities. This is a bit of sort of blended learning and development with it. But we work with the lecturers to understand where your free time is so that we can fit those training modules in. Outside of that, if you think of this from an employment perspective, it is around um, a zero hours contract. So part of what we try and do here is if you aren't available for work or you're not able to do particular work at some time, that's fine because this is about creating a pool of individuals where others might be able to pick up that work. So once the training's out of the way, it's really down to yourselves whether you have got that time or not. And uh, if always uh, you come around saying we've got these five jobs, you can just say at this point, oh, I've got too much on my plate. I'll come around and do it next time or the next round of contracts that come in. It, there's no pressure on you to do anything, which is good. Yeah, it's um, it's more of that experience to it. But equally, you know, and that, this is why I pointed back to that LEP contract. We might be in a position where we get an increased capacity of work that comes through. Now, as what they're trying to do as part of that national network is just create that bit of resilience between the other centres and other students. So within the northeast area, it is Sheffield Allen in Northumbria, but in West Mids and East Mids, they've got pockets of universities. So it's as much as a little that you want to do really once, once that training's there. Um, we've suddenly add some inquiries which we didn't expect this but this goes to show you the sort of um where businesses are thinking there's talk of can we do some in effect subcontracted work for some of the other organizations who have suddenly had an increased amount of work come through so this is where the model changed slightly um from the pitch that we gave last year because of covid but 
Nevertheless, what we do here is once everybody's trained to a particular level, then we look at either trying to spread the work out or just saying to some groups, you know, is anybody available to do X in a couple of weeks? Um, and what we try and do here is create that little bit of blended learning with things. So some of you might have a real interest in web application testings and some of you might have no interest at all in, in other areas of it. So we try and work with you where there's no point giving you work that you're not interested in uh, and don't want to do. But there is a point in trying to give you work that might test you, might stretch you, might help you with some learning ability. So we try and understand that because from your point, you know, training aside, this is work. So do you want to do the work or don't you? And if you don't, somebody else will want to do it. Part of this is going to be trying to put you through stuff with others. So this isn't also about putting you out there on your own and sort of leaving you a little bit sort of vulnerable. You will work with other people. You'll work under a mentor. You'll work under a senior uh, ethical hacker who can give you that advice and guidance. You work with ourselves and we can give you some of the experience that we've got. If it's talking to businesses and delivering training, that would never be on your own either. That would be something that we do and we might bring you into it. So, for example, if somebody's got a real interest about passwords or, um, you know, you've got some real uh, innovative stuff about phishing emails and what to look for, that would be part of a presentation with some others. And we just look at who would be out there and available at particular times to be able to, to deliver this. Now, when we set up this, this was around face-to-face -face training and delivering and events. Clearly, everything's moved into an online position, but COVID aside, we're hoping sort of for this be a bit of a blended approach in some respects. So if COVID disappeared tomorrow, we wouldn't suddenly rush out and everything be delivered in, in rooms with people. But what we do want to be able to do is get out and see some individuals because I think there's a lot more you can get and deliver and get from an engaging perspective from being in the rooms with people as well. If we're looking at that, then we also take into account where people live or where they're going to travel from. But just to go back to the original point, once you're trained, it's as much or as little as that you want to do, but we'll never leave you in a position where you've just sort of picked up a job and off you've gone and we're asking what you're doing. We, this is about working with us. This is this is what sort of teamwork and development is. Because I go back to those points at the very beginning, you're going to bring a lot of specialism into it. And as we are, neither side really works without the other. Yeah, I think that answered it. Um, are there any skill requirements uh, as some people, as you say earlier, were first years? Um, the training is pretty good. Um, it just depends what you're asked to do. So I can't go into too much about what different things, like what the different services are until you're actually in, I don't think. Yeah, so, I mean, those, if, if you look on the website, the, you sort of see a little bit more details about each aspect to it. But you'll qualify from a, a technical aspect by being on this course. Yes, we do do a little bit more digging around um, those technical skills, uh, and, and that's with the university. But that, that is part of, but not exclusively uh, so, part, uh, it's part of this process. So I wouldn't necessarily worry about that technical part. There'll be some stuff that might test you, or you might have to go away and, and you know, look at stuff. You might have an interest, and it develops your interest. You know, it's a bit of a two-way program, this, with it. From our point, you know, we, we aren't delivering the training or, or lecturing aspect that universities would do. What we can tell you is the work that the universities do will prepare you for the work that we need you to be able to do. So whether you're comfortable with that or whether you've got a particular interest in some areas or a weakness that you're trying to develop or a weakness that you're trying to avoid, that's where we'll sort of try and work with you and assess, you know, what parts is it. And equally, this isn't about either putting you out your comfort zone in terms of standing up and delivering some teaching or, or, um, or, or, or training, rather. This isn't about, you know, making you want to feel awkward by uh, having some slides up and talking through it. 
But equally, the ones of you that want to do that or feel comfortable to do it, absolutely. There's a room, you know, in this where we've done some of the work where we put more technical individuals with more, um, uh, I suppose, commercially aware individuals. So we, we try and pair people together where you'll complement each other. But what we don't do is want people to think, oh, I, I don't like talking to groups. They're going to make me do that. I don't want to do it. There might be more technical roles in the background that you can do with this. What I would, would say is, post university if you're wanting to go into employment in this area you look at the connections that these organizations could bring for you and actually we've got um students who are applying for jobs with some of these organizations you know the i go back to the trusted partners so they're the ones that are doing the cyber essentials and cyber essentials plus if you recognize the names up there of, of some of the ones in the northeast so take somebody like waterstones for example they aren't in this just to deliver Cyber Essentials and Cyber Essentials Plus to, to businesses. Their, their company and their remit and their resourcing is far greater than that. They're wanting to be part of the centre because they understand this is about increasing resilience for businesses and it's that public good and it's that safer, safer community. What they also get to see, though, is people like yourselves working to see your products, to see your applications from it. So... This is almost a, a look in the shop window from their perspective, because I go back to we've done the work around the universities that we want to sort of be part of working with us. The universities like yourselves are fantastic because they want to come and work with us and to see that innovation and that desire. You know, you've got great people like Bijou as part of this part to it. So there's something in it from everybody's angle. Uh, and there's, there's sort of no hidden agendas in this, but they'll get to see you guys working. So if you want to sit, be in this particular area, then this might give you an advantage and a, and a step up to that bit of exposure. And then actually from a, a practical application, whether it becomes placements or experience further down the line, you being part of a network that you can then talk about that maybe puts you a, a difference from um, certainly other, other universities or other students who um, maybe don't get this exposure. And just to reconfirm, the uh, application deadline is November 30th. Yeah, so I know it's not long, you're looking at sort of 12 days, but yeah, by, by December, uh, email, um, just with a short covering letter, just a bit of a personal statement um, and your CV to inquiries at nebrc.co.uk and just you know across the two and this isn't about how to write a format or a or a letter but just across the two just tell us about your technical knowledge skills previous current experiences desires personal qualities you know your interests what you know what makes um you want to be part of our team and what makes us want to have you part of our team and then post that part uh, we'll look at a bit of a short listing process uh, and to be fair the other side of Christmas uh, will probably be um, the next stage in terms of those interviews and presentations but um, that's something that we can talk about to the to the applicants and the ones that get successful in the short listing. Perfect. Um, I don't think anyone else has any more questions. Um, can you give it another 30 seconds and if not then Thank you very much, Martin, for your time. Uh, sorry, Steve, I just got a message from Martin <laughs> on my other thing. Uh, <laughs> so, uh, he wants to call me, so there we go. Uh, get myself That's fine. We, uh, we, we, we cover a lot of things between ourselves anyway. And the one from Yorkshire. Not them. Yes, I don't think anyone else has any more questions. No, it doesn't look like it. Right. Right. Nope. Well, uh, hopefully that uh, will have generated some interest. Um, if people have got any sort of queries before you apply or, or drop something in, um, you know where we are. Uh, you know, I've given you the website enough times now uh, and the email address. But like I said, people like Matt and Ryan will be able to put you in touch with us. What I'd say with this is if, if you want to apply, don't don't hold off. What I would say happened last year is 
some people were put off applying and I think um, maybe regretted it in terms of looking at some of the opportunities. You know, once you're through that initial exposure and that training to it, take as much or as little as you, as you want from it. You know, we're wanting to invest in you, but it's this is a long term investment uh, and association and thing. You know, there'll be easier times and harder times. But one of the things we, we have looked at is if universities were operating normally, we want to understand where people sort of geographically retreat to because some of this is work that you can fit around in your holidays or in an evening, um, whether it's term time or outside of term. We've actually got some students that are still with us while they're doing some placement. Um, part of that might be just to sort of minimalise their, their tick over with it. But particularly as a first year student, this is a bit of a medium to long term commitment. This isn't something that renews every 12 months. And if you've not done the work, um, then you're off off the books. The only time that we'd sort of be having those chats were is if there was a bit of, you know, a, a consistent feeling that um, perhaps this wasn't for you at this time. Um, but that doesn't mean you couldn't sort of take a short break from some of that work because of commitments around courses or other things, personal life. So if in doubt, you know, come back to us and ask some questions or, or get an application in and we can have a chat. But thanks for your time and sorry for the technical um, hitches before and. No oh, problem. It's uh, one, probably one of the first ones that's gone uh, as wrong as it has, but it's all changing. So. Right. Yeah, well, it's um, like I said, it's uh, I'll not bother updating my operating system again now, but uh, Big Sur versus Microsoft Teams. I think we've learned a few things today. Yep. But thank you. Microsoft <laughs> versus Apple, there we go. <laughs> oh, all right, well, guys. Everything was all right, and uh, hope to hear from some of you soon. Yep. Thank you. So uh, we're going to head shortly head over to uh, the second stream link, um, where I'll be going over uh, a Hack the Box uh, machine called Academy. Um, so I'll see you over there in a few minutes.